pray for Jenna, 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 Jenna. I pray for Jenna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the daily life of a Muslima, and I am Amina Ismail. Welcome to our show whereby we will be talking everything considering life, lifestyle, health, how you should live as a Muslima, how you're going to succeed your life, and how you're going to create a healthy lifestyle with yourself and with your Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today's topic is mental health and suicide. I know so many things come to your mind when you hear mental health and suicide, but what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Most of us, when we say, when we, or maybe when someone tells us mental health, all we think is someone who is crazy, someone who is in the hospital, or someone who should be chained up. That is not the case when it comes to mental health. Mental health is just like physical health. You know, when someone tells you, how is your physical health? They don't mean if you are sick. They are asking you, how is your health going on? Are you feeling well? It's the same case as when someone asks you, how is your mental health? Or when someone mentions to you mental health. And what is the definition of a mental health? Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Mental health is very important in all aspects of life, from childhood, adolescence, through adulthood. And as we grow up, we go through so many things, and those things affect our mental health. They create an impact. Maybe let's say our emotions, how you deal with uh, when you are sad, how you deal uh, when you are not feeling well. Those are the emotions. And uh, your psychological, what are you thinking? The things you think or the things that is in your mind, they might as well affect your psychological well-being. So when someone tells you about mental health, this is what is meant. Don't think about you know, being in the hospital, being chained up, just like how, you know, the society thinks of mental health. And that is the definition. So what causes mental health or mental illnesses? There are so many things that causes mental illnesses. They, uh, they categorize in three. There is uh, the biological factor, there is uh, life experiences, and there is the family history. I think I'm going to repeat this one. There's the biological factor, there's life experiences, and there's family history. What do I mean biological factors? These are the brain chemicals. These are the things that are produced in our brains. And these are the things you cannot see, but they are there. Let's say life experiences. Maybe you have suffered from an abuse. Maybe you have suffered from something that led to trauma that is life experiences. Maybe let's say someone bullied you in school, that is a life experience. Let's say maybe you are abused at home or maybe you're abused outside home or maybe let's say there is a violence at home that can cause you your mental health. It can be in a very critical space. And when it comes to family history, maybe let's say when you track the, uh, your generations back, maybe let's say your grandmother had a mental illness, maybe your grandfather, or maybe even your sister. You know, there's that family history. Maybe there's just someone who has any mental illnesses. And that can be a cause for you because it's a generation thing. That you, it can be one of the ways that actually you're going to get mental illness. Uh, there are several chemicals in our brain when it comes to the biological factors. Uh, chemical imbalancement in the brain causes mental illnesses. We have several brain chemicals. For me to mention, uh, maybe like serotonin and uh, uh, dopamine, such are the chemicals. We have the neuroceptors in our brains that control, you know, how we function. That is it. And uh, when it comes to brain chemicals, there are uh, several things 
to mention, I've just mentioned two of them. There's the serotonin and there's the dopamine. All of these, they control our emotions, how we think, how we behave, and all of that. Those, those are what causes mental illnesses. Let's jump to the other side. Uh, early signs, how can you know if you are mentally ill? How can you know if there's something wrong with you? We have signs and the signs takes from uh, five months to six months. That is the duration whereby you can, uh, you can say you are mentally ill. What are the early signs? There is uh, eating and sleeping disorder. Here, where what I mean is you can sleep too much or you can eat too much. Vice versa, you can, eat, you can sleep too little or you can eat too little. That is one of the signs. Another sign is pulling away from people. You, you don't want to be around noise. You don't want to interact with people. All you do is just, you know, stay in your, stay in your own space. You do your thing. Like, it's very hard for you, you know, to go out, interact with people, spend time with your family. Another symptom is uh, having unexplained pain and aches. Sometimes you find someone, he's complaining about too much migraine. Or maybe you say, I have a muscle pull. Maybe someone tells you, I don't know, I'm just exhausted. I am feeling pain. My whole body is aching and you don't know. And uh, you haven't done anything that, that caused, you know, that pain. You actually even don't know what caused the pain. So such pains might be a sign of you having a mental illness. Uh, you're having a low energy. Every time when you wake up, you have a low energy. When you do something, you know, you just like, you don't have the energy to do things. Uh, another thing is uh, inability to perform daily tasks. When someone has a mental illness, it will be very hard for them to wake up, brush their teeth, you know, to just eat. You can't do basic things. It becomes so, so hard for you. You, you will actually be like, you won't have that energy to go and do what you're supposed to be do. Sometimes you, maybe let's say you are working. So waking up in the morning becomes so difficult. It, it becomes so hard. Uh, you know, hearing voices and you know, believing things that don't exist. Maybe let's say you are just, you know, you're just sitting there and all you hear is a lot of noises in your mind. There is so much chaos going on and you believe things that are not there. This is called hallucination. Maybe you're just sitting and you just see a ghost. Maybe you see, you know, unexpected things. That might be a sign for you that you are mentally ill. There are, there are more signs. These are just a few of the signs that I'm giving you. Uh, you know, the common signs are, you know, mood swings. Maybe let's say every time you are sad, you, you don't eat, it's difficult for you to eat. Sometimes people have, you know, eating disorder. So that is a mental illness. You eat too little or you eat too much. You know, people who eat too much, we call them, you know, you know, if I have a stress, I'm eating, you know, I'm an overeater, but that is not normal. You are overeating because there's something going on inside you. Maybe you are under eating because there's something going on inside you. When it comes to sleep, you are sleeping too little. Otherwise, actually, even there's no sleeping at all. All day, the whole night, you are just on bed. There is no sleeping. Or otherwise, you'll be sleeping the whole day. You can even sleep a whole week just like that. So that is not normal. If you see these signs, what I'm encouraging you is just know there's something going on. There is something that you need to actually, that's something that wants your attention. So make sure you give the attention it's needed. Let's talk about uh, example of mental illnesses. We have several examples. Let me give you a few examples of mental illnesses. Depression, as we hear. You know, our generation every time is like, ah, oh, I'm depressed, I'm this, I am that. You know, depression has, has become a normal word for us. Actually, for the youth that are living today, depression is everywhere. 
whether you're in your home, where you're outside, if you're at school, if you are working, you won't lack anything called depression. So that is one depression. Another thing is anxiety. You know, somebody tells you, you know, I'm feeling unwell, I'm anxious, I'm tensing. They even go an extent whereby you sweat, you can't do anything just because of the anxiety. Another thing is bipolar. Bipolar is the mood swings. So we have bipolar one and bipolar two. Another thing is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Another example is schizophrenia. Those are examples of mental illnesses that exist, the commons being depression and anxiety, and also PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Those are uh, the common mental illnesses we find around us, around the environment we live, and all of that. When, uh, when you're feeling such things, when uh, there is something wrong, when you're having, uh, you know, depression episodes, when you're always anxious, it reaches even a point whereby you can't even hold a glass because you are shaking. Maybe you are anxious to do something. If maybe, let's say, you're an outgoing person, you are, the, you, are, you, are, you are a person whereby you just go, you interact with people, you do outside activities, it becomes very hard for you because you are anxious. You know, even doing small things becomes, you know, it's become a hard task. Because that is the feeling you're having. That is, uh, that is what is going on inside your mind. So you really need to pay, you really need to be key about the signs. There are many, many signs to consider. Don't just, you know, you find yourself sleeping too much for maybe, let's say, two days don't consider yourself being mentally ill. You know, for you to be diagnosed, you are a mentally ill person, clinically, it should be consistently, or three times a week or four times a week for up to six months. That is the time you really need, you know, to see a doctor, you see a psychiatrist, you see a psychologist, then they might diagnose you. If the signs goes from zero to six months, consistently, most of the time. Consistently doesn't mean, you know, every time, but most of the time, if you find yourself having these signs, kindly, it is attention, it is calling you, you really need to take action. You really, really need to take action. Don't underestimate the signs. Don't really underestimate the signs. And there are so many signs to consider. But uh, the best thing when you recognize, or maybe when you see there's something going on with you, things are not usual. The best thing to do is go and see a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or even go for therapy. That is the time you can know where you're heading, you can know if there's actually a problem with you. Kwa mahamri kaima teacher patilaini na mapishi yote uyapendayo ya kuburudisha na yenye ladha nzuri tumia nyota mafuta ya nyota kuboresha afya yako na utaipenda How do you take care of uh, your mental health Let's say maybe you have, you know, you have the signs or maybe you don't have. You know, when we are taking care of our mental health or maybe when, when, you, yeah, when we're taking care of our mental health, it doesn't mean you should be mentally ill. These, you know, how to take care of your mental health depends with the person and actually it applies to all of us. If you are mentally ill, you can use the tips I'm going to give you or if you just want to be, you know, just take care of your mental health. The way we are told, you know, take care of your physical health. You know, don't do this, don't do that. It's the same case. So it applies if you're mentally ill, if you are not even, if you're healthy. It's a, it's, it's a two-way thing. One of the things, uh, the first thing, you know, as a Muslim, our deen teaches us about this mental health. It teaches us all about life. So the first thing, for you to take care of your mental health is connect your heart to Allah. That is the basic, that is the foundation. We all know if we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
things are going to be easy for us. And don't underestimate that power. That is the basic, as I've told you. That is actually the foundation of how you should be starting to take care of your health. That is one. Another thing is eating healthy. What do I mean eating healthy? Eating healthy is, you know, eating vegetables, a lot of fruits. You know, you cut out excess sugar. You cut off uh, excess oil. You know, you need to eat healthy. And eating healthy doesn't mean you should break your bank account. No. Eating healthy can be, you know, just eating uh, skooma, eating spinach. You can... Uh, just cabbage, you know, drinking a lot of water, taking fruits, that is eating healthy. So don't compromise when it comes to eating healthy because it lays a good foundation. When you eat healthy, everything about your body becomes healthy. And you know, as when people say, what you eat shows from outside. So if you eat healthy, it will show physically. People will see you, you are mentally, oh, you, you are okay, physically you are healthy and all of that eating healthy. Something else is exercising. We really underestimate this. Exercising is important and you really don't have to go to the gym. You really have to, you don't have to pay that, you know, extra, extra bill to go to the gym so that you can take care of your mental health. No, you know, exercise, you can just skip a rope. Every morning you just take a walk. You know, you just do sit-ups at home, do small, small exercise. We know as a Muslim, most of the time we are in our homes. So we can have, you know, the time to do exercise, to eat healthy, and it becomes very easy for you. Something else you should do is ask for help. This is where we fail most of the time. This is where we really, really fail most of the time. You see yourself that something is wrong. You clearly actually see yourself something is wrong and all you do is just keep it for yourself all you do is suffer alone something actually i normally tell most of the people is that humans are not angels and no one is going to see there's something going on with you unless you speak out so please ask for help as i said earlier go seek for therapy uh, go to a psychiatrist go to a psychologist ask for help even those around you you can ask for help from your siblings from your sisters maybe the imams at the mosque someone you see can help you so ask for help in order for you not to suffer the moment you keep quiet you're just going to suffer alone so make sure you ask for help something else is do what makes you happy and do what you are good at as humans, you know, when you know something, or maybe let's say I'm good at this thing, if I do this thing, this thing will make me happy. It just, you know, it, happiness just comes naturally when you do what you are good at and what makes you happy. So don't sit on yourself. If you have a talent and you really love that thing, do it. That is a way of taking care of your mental health you know do things that you're good at you know try on new things gain more knowledge so that you know you can be comfortable it can make you happy do anything that makes you happy if you know reading the quran every day makes you happy do that if playing football every day makes you happy do that the basic here is you know doing what you love and doing what makes you happy and on top of it if you are good at this thing, naturally you will take care of your mental health because you're going to be happy, you're going to be healthy. Be outside nature. Sometimes sitting at, home, sitting at home does more harm than we think. You don't have to sit the whole week inside the home. So make sure you go out, you know, just bask at the sun, you just walk and all of that. So be outside nature. Don't lock yourself in a room. Don't minimize your movement by just being at home, locking yourself in a room. That is going to affect you. So be outside nature. Meditate. Meditation is something great. It has a good impact in our lives, especially our mental health. So if you don't know how to meditate, you know there are many sources on how to meditate. So teach yourself how to meditate. And meditation, it can be one minute, two minutes, 12 minutes, as long as you love. And you know, there's the Islamic meditation. You really don't have to say things. You really don't have to do, you know, 
the kind of meditation we normally see out here. You know, when someone tells you meditate, it's just, you know, clearing your thoughts, focusing on, uh, on your thoughts, you, 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 you breathe, you know, breathing in, breathing out. That is meditation. As long as you just clear your mind. And it takes time before you cope before you become a perfect meditator. So make sure you do meditation. A daily meditation, if you cannot, twice a week, that's going to really, really improve your mental health. And that is a great way to take care of your mental health. Something else, be kind to yourself. We live in a cruel world. There are so much that is going on. So many things are happening. And the best thing you can do for yourself is being kind to yourself. Kindly be kind to yourself, just like the way you're kind to others. Treat yourself with respect, with much love. Give yourself the attention that is needed. Thinking positive is something else that can maintain, or it's a way to take care of our mental health. Always think positively. Think positively. I don't know how much I should emphasize this, but thinking positively will really help you. You know, sometimes all we do is think negatively. We are all, what if, what if? You know, there's so many negativity in our heads that it actually binds us to do the things we are meant to do, the things that actually, that makes us happy. So think positively, always know, you're going to be fine. Always know there's something that is that's going to help you, or maybe there's someone who's there for you. Always think positively. Sleeping well and resting enough. You know, sleeping well. We are supposed to be sleeping uh, nine from nine p.m. to let's say to seven. So a maximum good sleep is eight to ten hours. So it depends with your schedule. Uh, we live, you know, a time whereby your sleep can be, you know, we can sleep 1 a.m., you know, 3 a.m., or maybe even actually don't sleep the whole night. That will really, really affect your mental health. So make sure you sleep 8 to 10 hours a day. And sleeping early makes, makes life easier. Once you sleep early, you will wake up early, you know, you will feel better even yourself. So I'm giving you a task today, yeah? Go and try, you know, sleeping early. Teach yourself how to sleep early and, you know, to get enough rest. You know, we are uh, we're always working. We are always on the go. There's, there's always something we need to do that, you know, we neglect our body, we neglect our soul. You know, just like the dean says, your soul has a right over you. So you should obey by that. Your soul have a right over you. So make sure you sleep well. You, you take enough rest that when you wake up the next day or when you want to do something or when the day reaches, you are energized for the day, you are okay and you can do the things that are ahead of you. Journaling, journaling your emotions is the same thing as, you know, asking for help. Maybe that you don't have someone to talk to. Maybe you are shy to talk about your emotions. Maybe you're afraid because someone is judging you. Maybe you are afraid to talk to people, you know, to express yourself. And there are people who, you know, it's very hard for them to express themselves. So the best thing to do is journal your emotions. The more you keep things to yourself, the more you're getting hurt, the more it's destroying your mental health. So the best thing to do, you know, is to let your emotions out, journal, talk about it. You know, you don't have to talk about to everyone. Or you don't have to, you know, to tell everyone, you know, I can't sleep every day, I'm not eating well. There are so many things. You, you just have to, you know, to look for one person that you can trust. And that person is going to be your ally. That person is going to help you. So talk about it. Journal your emotions. You know, the book and the pen should be your biggest support system. Every time you journal, there is, uh, you know, you get relieved. So journal it. If you don't know how to journal, start. Um, seek a therapist. You really have to. If you see there's something wrong with you, go for therapy, as I said earlier. Go for, see a psychiatrist, see a doctor. Don't just sit there, ask for help. You really have to, you know, get the help. We are done with how to take care of your mental health. 
So that is taking care of us. How do we take care of the people around us? How, or maybe let's say you have a sister who is uh, suffering from one of the mental illnesses, maybe your mother or even a friend. So how do you take care of such people? The first thing, be kind to them. When someone is ill, when someone is going through this crisis of mental health, they need someone to be kind to them. They need someone to be there for them. Give them the support they need. This is the time you can be useful to your sister, to your mother, you know, to your neighbor, and even to your friend. So make sure you're a good support system. Don't judge them. We are in a society whereby when we say you, maybe you're mentally ill, when you say there's something wrong with you, or maybe when you, you know, you see you are, you see when you have the symptoms and you tell someone, the society is very quick to judge you because they don't understand all these things. So don't, don't be that person who always judge. Don't judge when someone confines in you, when someone tell you they're having a difficult time with their mental health. Don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Encourage them to seek help. When someone has a, a mental illness, when someone has a mental illness, it becomes very difficult for them to talk about it. It becomes very difficult for them to go out. You know, life becomes so hard that even they can't do things. So the only thing as a friend you can do is ask, you know, encourage them to seek help. Give them the encouragement. Tell them, uh, you know, you're going to be okay. We can do this. Even go an extent of, you know, caring for them, taking them to the hospital, you know, escorting them to go to when they're having a therapy session. Yeah, so encourage them to go out, encourage them, uh, you know, assure them that you are there because it makes easy. As someone who has mental illness, the first and the best thing we always expect from us, from people, is we need someone who is there for us. We need someone who we love as extra. We love someone who we love someone who is going to take care of us. We want someone who is not going to judge us. So make sure you always there for them. Don't judge them take care of them. They are your loved ones. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe it can be you. So be the kind human and be the best you can be. And that is all from me.